Welcome to Art for All People. This is Lisa. And Jayan. We are interviewing today Rana Del Rio Ascalis. Welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I am an artist who works with a lot of recycled things. And I guess my background really is architecture, but I just stumbled upon art through my yoga practice. Cool. Um, Can you talk about that? Yeah, I actually started about two years ago, back in uh, February 2011. I was going to the studio for about six months. I was just barely starting to feel my practice and falling in love with it. And they had this um, kind of like a program that it was the first time they're offering it for everyone. It's called the Yoga Challenge. 20 classes in 28 days. And I couldn't put my head around this concept of challenge and yoga. Because yeah. I just saw yoga as just you go and you love it and there's no challenge, it's just fun and you're in it, you know. Mm -hmm. But one of my um, amazing teachers kind of actually encouraged me to take it and she said that maybe I would be ready for it. Mm -hmm. And I figured, okay, well, if she's, you know, encouraging it, it's probably something good about it. So I registered last, on like, practically the last day to register, I think, and um, decided to take it on. But I figured if I'm going to do this challenge, I should somewhat document it, you know, have fun with it. I don't know what I was going to get at. Like, I wanted to get back to writing again. So I had collected um, recycled coffee filters and I, hey, I can choose it as a journal, write what I'm experiencing in this challenge day by day throughout the month of February. Why coffee filters? It happened to be in my kitchen already. <laughs> I started collecting it six months prior to that uh, because I didn't want to throw it away. It just looked really nice one night and I decided to just collect it and I tend to do that. I want to repurpose materials for something else. I didn't know what it was going to be for. I figured something to write on or something to do something with or maybe even wrap presents with or whatnot. But as they collected, they started looking like a, a book or mm. a, a pad. So then the thought of making it into a journal kind of came into my head. So you thought I'd do this challenge. So I'll take it out yeah. and I'll start writing on it. Mm. But I couldn't use words, like nothing. My thought was like, okay, after each class, go home and write what you feel and all this stuff that you, you know, you, you felt during class. But I literally couldn't write words. Mm. And being uh, that architecture is my background, I started doing doodles. You know, kind of. Um, can I show you guys? Yes, yes please. please. Yes, love. To. So I started doing um, stick figures that I'm used to in um, my architecture projects. Um, so they. This is the very first one. The first one? Very first one ever. Wow. Was just stick figures of how we would do uh, architecture, you know, uh -huh. like to scale the building. You would draw these little stick figures mm -hmm. just to see how big the building is. And so I, I started drawing myself on a yoga mat. And then the next day happened, and then the next day happened, and then still no words. And then just from that, it just progressed to all these different metaphors that started forming itself into a more uh, a really different expression than what I'm used to seeing mm -hmm. in figure of people. Um, and I just continued on the challenge and next thing you know, towards the end of the challenge, it's just, it became a collection and yeah. I continued even after the challenge and I showed it to the yoga studio owner and she welcomed it into the studio and students can see it on display while practicing and it just kind of took its own life. <laughs> what, what information did it have to tell you after you, you know, you kind of channeled it, right? I started feeling like it was the first time in my whole creative life, I should say, that when I was making it, I didn't look anywhere else. I didn't look at a model, I didn't flip through books to, to, to do study cases of architecture, I didn't look at somebody standing to see what they look like, you know. It was the first time I, it was this. It was just. You were focused on a different yeah, way. It was like after an amazing class or accumulation of several amazing classes, you feel something inside and just, wow, oh, what is this? And mm. then I just grab, and I was using uh, color pencils because that's what I'm used to in architecture. I would just grab a piece of recycled paper and put it there. And, and then it's the first time I'm not, it's hard. It, mm -hmm. You just you're just being the conduit mm. of what you're feeling in here, and it just comes into your 
the tip of your pencil and you're just kind of at the same time amazed by what's coming out because you don't know if you could redo that form. You know, I'm like, I'll stop and I'm like, how did I do that angle? How did that hand look actually look like it's doing what it should look like? You know, um, you so, let go because you're so tired from the, you know, in class you, you exhaust your body. This is what the teachers always tell us. You exhaust your body so you're, you're just so open to anything. You're not worried about the world or society or what other person is doing next to you. It's, you're so exhausted and open at the same time that you just let it out, you know, from here to here with no interruptions of expectations and judgments. There was an unknown and a surprise in the process. Yeah. A lot of it, I, I, I finish one metaphor, I'll stare at it, and I'm like, wow, like, where'd you come from? You know? uh, what was happening at your life at that moment in time, like parallel to it? Probably the parallel would be you know, my daughter was uh, two years ago, so about going into four years old. And I had, you know, consciously decided I wanted to stay home. So I left architecture in a way. And I think it was, she's getting older, so I'm trying to kind of find out where I'm going next. So I think just the trying to figure out you as a mother going back into the world or just also loving yoga and just starting to be aware of what's in here mm. and loving it and accepting it and embracing it and the awareness I guess you would say pulls that out of you, you know, um, you're not I'm not drawing anymore I'm not thinking does this look right you know it's just the awareness that it's okay that's your art it's no nobody can judge you if it's beautiful or not nobody can tell you Oh, dude, it's too dark or too soft. Like, and you're just like, God, I'm free. You know, you're just free. free. <laughs> wow. To express whatever is happening in there. It's like a filter. Kind of funny. It's a filter. It's a filter <laughs> paper. Uh, <laughs> what, like, if you could describe the feeling, like, uh, you know, you said it's just coming through you. What does that feel like? Or, or can you describe it? It's hard to describe yeah. something. It's a feeling. It's a feeling. Yeah, it's not something that... Could you do time space? Where's time and space? While I'm drawing yeah. it, like um, it goes away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It literally just you fall into this new dimension of creativity that's not no borders, no limits, no and then you follow it with a grin, like how amazing this feels, mm -hmm. like freedom to just yeah, that's what it feels right, you know. It's not a form. It's a, It's almost like the you know if you have an abstract art versus traditional or whatnot. Abstract allows you to kind of conform something, you know, form something that is unique to you, unique to your soul, and it's like nobody can. So that's why there's no judgment because you let go of what people might think because who can even judge it when it's really a unique you in it, you know, it's your own, it's just an expression, and everybody would have a different expression about it, and that's okay, because you know what expression it makes for you, you know. So you're suggesting that anybody can do this? Anybody can do this. Art is for all people. It's just letting go of just expectations on yourself. It takes a lot of courage, right? Yeah, but when it's happening, you don't know that you're putting on that carriage is just in the list, you know, I think that's what the yoga practice for me um, does to me because you they, they you just they just put you in this in this state of accepting who you are and just being free and just ah it's like the most sacred moment of the day. It's like this mat and then you carry that over to the world. And then how do you carry your life? like you would on your map. Mm -hmm. It's the same expression. How do you carry that back to your art or your creativity? It's all the same frame of uh, reference, except different scale or medium. You know, how do you, when you're holding a pose in yoga, you can either fall or you can like, beat yourself up for not getting into the pose, or you can just let the stroke go off the paper. It doesn't matter. You can fall off your mat. You know, it, nobody's 
nobody cares, you know, they're thinking the same thing, you know, like, it's really the only space I can find myself free, mm. you know, and also the community, I think, helps when you feel everybody's in their own journey, but, but there's like a connectivity within the studio or within that, you know, class. If you're tuned in, then you start to sense people's positive energy also, and then it kind of goes in through you too. So, it's just, uh, it's hard to put words to it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> So how does healing fit into all of this yoga and art practice? It starts to make you feel. Mm. It's like when you, when you tap in the feeling. Uh, I mean, our emotions are all tied to feelings, right? right. I mean, and uh, when we're healing, it's all about emotions, whether it's joy, anguish, happiness, gratitude, to regrets, to uh, resentment, or not. Those are all emotions, and they're feelings. So when you I think that when we tap into feelings by creating feelings, mm. it's slowly letting that see out of us. Feeling is healing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> feeling is, I'm not, I always been saying this since it kind of came to me one day. I'm staring at my art and I'm like, what am I doing? You know, because I'm, you know, I'm used to like doing the architecture. Oh yeah, you're a designer. Oh, Ron is an artist now. I'm like thinking, I don't know if it's just that. I think it's, I'm, I'm not drawing or painting, I'm feeling it. You mm -hmm. know, I'm just feeling away and it just kind of came to my head like, this is what it is. I'm, when I'm looking at all these metaphors, it's the feelings in that form that others could relate to, but not the same each time. It's unique to their own soul mm -hmm. as they see it. You know, it's like a, their own mix of what's happening in their own heart will communicate to them what that piece looks like. Yeah, that's amazing. It, uh, I mean, basically you're saying artists, for all people, you just have to feel when you're doing it. Yeah. And then the healing arises. It happens on its own. Yeah. Like it's, um, because when you start to do art and you're doing it without the thought of somebody's going to judge it, you're letting yourself free, right? So then when you carry that, when you leave your art, your canvas, or whatever you're working on, and then you walk out into the world, if you have a remnants of that, then you start to feel free too and not worry about what other people are thinking, because it really doesn't matter. You know? That's beautiful, yeah. Why do you think, you know, the exhibition that you're in is called Bridge to the Soul at USC, which is huge. We have 26 artists, and it's all about arts and healing. Why do you feel that art and yoga is a bridge to the soul? <laughs> it's the bridge, the word bridge is so powerful. It feels like if I was to put some sort of a word that the world could uh, grasp in meaning, a bridge, you know, it connects two independent things. And I feel like doing yoga, it starts to open the gates to get onto that bridge, to find yourself in that creative world that's always in there but what's missing I, I believe nowadays just in society is that bridge there's all this stuff happening inside you but people are afraid to cross right mm -hmm. and some people are willing to just like leap of faith right yeah. but some people I believe most people I think including myself needed that bridge and I think that's what the connection between yoga and artists. Yoga exhausts the body and lets you tune in where all this wealth of creativity has always been there. It just needs to be tapped. You know, like when you have like a sore shoulder, if you, if you just somebody touches it or like just put their finger on it, you feel alive, right? Yeah. You feel like, oh, I needed that, right? And so it's the same thing, I think, in yoga, it taps in. That just needs to be woken up a little bit. That's fantastic. Mm. Yeah, no, good, amazing information. So, what you know, what's the future hold for this project? Um, yo, I mean, we have a thing called Yoga Art, which is amazing. So we're totally on this on your map. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the future for for you and the project? Well, I definitely 
feel the call to continue, mm -hmm. and I feel like um, it needs to be shared. Uh, I'd like to be able to connect with others who are maybe having a little tap that they need to find their creative self. Because I know so many friends and just strangers saying, I've always wanted to get back to art, or I've always wanted to pick up mm -hmm. a pencil and draw. I feel like I could, but oh my gosh, I can't. I want to connect with these people and say, it's there, you know, you have the available resources around you, but it takes that first initial step on the mat or step on opening, you know, just accepting that it is possible, that it is in there. And we don't forget when we were two, three years old that we picked up that crayon and, and doodled and say, look mom, you know, and you're just so happy and it doesn't matter what it looks like and your reaction to it is what the reaction brings also. It's like your mom's so excited because you're just so excited and you don't care if that looks like a certain thing where you're just happy, right? So it's always in us. It's just, so I wanted this, I think that's what I would like to do is to, to keep on connecting with others that could also tap in and be on their own journey because they're going to, everyone's going to have why do you feel that um, in our society it's just not encouraged? Like I know I've met so many people that I haven't picked up a crayon since I've been two, and you're like, why? I mean, we're art advocates, so it's like, why not? You know. <laughs> um, so why do you think that it's not? You know, why do people need permission almost? Yeah, why do people? Need <laughs> I think as we as we get out into the world, beginning when we when we start school, we start to as kids we start to hear the you shouldn't. Good. You can't. Mm -hmm. So there's it just kind of um, starts to uh, dilute all this willingness to be yourself because then you start to be compared, the grades being compared, everything starts to be compared around you. So then I think we tap into that expectation from that point, you know. And, and we, uh, there's a story, you guys probably know this already. But one thing I love about my yoga classes is the teachers would share stories about certain things that make total sense and one of the stories that um, one of my favorite is how uh, there's this young child who asked her mom who's a professor in college like what do you do and you heard this one and she said uh, well I teach um, college students how to draw and be creative and the child is all like you mean they forgot and it's true we forget why do we forget um, so the, the, uh, the going back in to that inner child, I think, is the key to going back to the creative soul, you know. Um, and I, I, for my own experience, I believe, and I'm sure there's other ways, but for my own experience, I believe yoga was my bridge, you know, to a different expression. Because my architecture was a totally different expression, full of expectation and guidelines and all these rules. And for this journey, it's the, my only rule is the no rule. <laughs> The no rule? The no rule, finally. To just feel as it feels right and stop when it doesn't feel right. And it's okay. And you go back to it and you call on you again. And you don't have to finish the art right there because then you're putting expectation on yourself. You know, it's yeah, it seems like it's wonderment is happening in the yoga and art pro process. Yeah. And, and I think, do you want to teach workshops? And do you have a film coming out? Or? Yeah, there's actually a film that we worked on because I noticed in the last few art shows that I've had, I've, my purpose in the art show is not individual painting, but what the whole process that got me there is about. And I noticed that I would talk to each viewer individually my story, and I felt like it was missing. Because you have all these crowd of people, right? And you have like a few minutes, you don't want to tie them to your painting. Want them to explore, so you you're trying to rush through your story. It just didn't feel authentic, or if it didn't it didn't feel as organic to talk about with a cup of coffee with a friend feeling, you know. So we um, collaborate. I collaborated with a couple of very talented um, people to create this film that tells the story of filter art and how it came about for me through my yoga practice. So you're calling it filter art. Yeah, I'm calling it filter art and. Um, it just ties into what I'm trying to do is filtering out that potent thing that gets left behind from from all this expectation time and that you know to instead of sharing it you feel like oh I can't I might get judged by that. What would that person think about me if I even talk about that or 
what would that person think if I use that color or that shape or that texture? And just letting it out because that's the most important thing that people can actually heal from. You know, you don't know who you're going to inspire with just one freedom of stroke. You know, it's, so that's filter art. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Um. <laughs> so in one word, what does art mean to you? My soul, soul. Soul. It's the soul, literally the soul. So basically yoga and art is almost like a nourishment for the, it's almost like a feeding or for the soul. And I see how it's um, also um, helping fellow yogis in my studio, how they would individually sometimes just share with me what they felt in the class looking at the art once one way and it's resonating for them their own interpretation which I love hearing about because a million eyes can look at it and have a million interpretation and my, my goal is if I can evoke if I can evoke emotion and I've seen it happen some of my teachers have cried mm -hmm. I'm gonna get emotional then you tapped it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. So it's like if you can evoke with others, mm -hmm. then you're doing something yeah. different for the world. So you're really transforming the world. I feel like that's such a big thing to, yeah. to understand. Yeah. But for me, I know I'm transforming myself. Yeah. And I think we're, we're almost a mirror of our surroundings. So if I'm healing myself, I believe that mm -hmm. people that I love and around me that I talk to can benefit from that as well. Mm -hmm. So art literally is healing. It is amazing. Have you seen, have you taught any, have you seen like people that you do yoga with do the art, like your process? And have you, have um, you, can you share a story with us? We're hoping to do a workshop. Mm. Uh, I'm hoping to do a workshop with my current teacher because I've, I've gone through different teachers and I'm still, I love all my teachers, mm -hmm. but um, some schedule have switched, so I, I have my current regular um, who actually revived the art for me because it actually stopped for a few months when I lost my regular schedule and I couldn't resonate. I was still going to yoga, I still love it, but for some reason I just couldn't resonate as much as I did. But now, back in the, a regular class, um, we're going extra. I, we, he, she understands how healing it is for me and how it's affecting the community. So we're hoping to put together a workshop where um, other fellow yogis have asked about too, and asking me how the process is, and, and uh, hoping to tap into their, and I know they can. It's just the, the platform to, you know, mm -hmm. like just the goal to to have that in your mind when you do the class. That's kind of maybe what you're trying to do, like what I wanted to journal. I didn't know it come into drawings, but just putting a platform of what you're, what you want out of your practice, outside of just the sweat and the perfect poses. It's not about those. It's how do you carry it to your life and to the world? Yeah, that's amazing. Um, any more questions, Jilong? Uh I guess one last question would be one peak moment. If you just intuitively think of it right now, what it does yoga art? When was that light literally turned on? Oh, it's still happening. <laughs> it's not a one-time thing. Uh, and sometimes it takes a few classes for that light to come through. You know, the accumulation of classes. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, oh, I got one amazing class, and you know, boom. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the work you put into it. It's the repeating of the classes and being in the practice. And mm -hmm. Sometimes it, it would take me five classes or a week before I go back to do something creative again. Um, so I don't, I'm not sure if I can point it out to one instant moment. But you can say that this is a practice. This it's is a your practice. daily practice. It's exactly. It's almost the same thing as practicing gratitude every day. And it's the same thing as practicing committing to nurturing yourself. Um, so yoga does that for me. I've, I've decided that when I started feeling good about myself, I also noticed how I am to, my pe to the people I love. So then I committed to myself that, hey, the more I nurture myself, it's actually helping. So I'm gonna commit 
to, to replanting and refueling myself so that I have more to give, you know. So it's really, really the practice and just staying in the course. And I, oh, when I got back, when I realized it, I think I remember I, I uh, wrote a quote to myself and I said, um, it's no longer a challenge, it's a decision mm. to nurture yourself. Very inspiring. Thank you.